Hello guys and welcome back to this amazing channel. This is Abhinav. So in this particular video, we will discuss about the problems of contest code forces round 938. Okay. And uh, it is actually a division 3 round that we will discuss in this particular video, right? So it is a division 3 round. Uh, we will discuss the 5 problems of this particular contest which is from A to E. Okay, the contest was really good and uh, all these five problems are from different topics, right? So let's discuss all the problems one by one. Actually, I tried the problem number F also, which is unfair game, but I was not able to solve it. So I will try it maybe later and if possible, I will upload the video. But for this video, I will discuss the first five problems only, right? Uh, cool. So the very first problem is guys, this yogurt sale. This was actually an easy problem. The problem says that there is some uh, yogurt, okay? There's a shop which has some yogurt. And they are saying that price of one yogurt is actually a rupees. Like you can say rupees or dollar, whatever. Okay. A rupees. And the price of two yogurt. Like, like if you will take two yogurts at once, the price of that will be B rupees. Right. B rupees. That is what the price of yogurt is. Right. Now. Uh, what Maxim has to do is Maxim has to buy N yogurts with minimum price, minimum possible price, right? So, uh, what we will do actually is see, first of all, there's a very easy way that whatever N yogurt is, um, so these are two offers basically present, like these are two offers present, and Maxim can choose any of these offers. So, the very basic thing that Maxim can do is he will <coughs> choose the first offer, he will multiply N with A. And he will, he has to give N A rupees, N into A rupees to buy N yogurt. Okay. But if he, he will choose the second offer, then here he can buy two yogurt at once at B rupees. So he can get a pair of yogurt as a bundle, right? So in this case, what he will do, it has to pay N by two into B rupees, but not just that. If N is odd, then there will be extra remaining uh, yogurt for that he has to pay extra A rupees. Because he has to take that separately. But this extra A will be only there if N is odd. Otherwise, it will not be there. Right. These are the two possible ways how you can buy yogurt. And then finally, answer will be the minimum of both. Right. So, if you will see, what I have also done here is. What I have done here is. I have uh, taken both. So, I, I have taken first in the answer. I have stored N by 2 to B second thing n by 2 into b and plus a if n is odd okay and i'm taking minimum of this answer and n into a because this n into a we have two options right so whatever is the minimum will make that as the answer right so uh that's the solution for the problem number a i hope that you have got the understanding of it let's discuss the problem number b it is a problem which is progressive square this is a basic brute force problem that i discussed right so what the problem is, see guys, the problem says that you have to actually create a matrix. How you will get the matrix? So you are given with the first element of the matrix. For example, let's say that the first element of the matrix is 1. Now you are given with two more terms, C and D. Let's say C is 2, D is 3. And N is given which is the size of the matrix. Let's say N is 4. And 4 means you have to create a matrix of size 4 by 4. Right. Let's create. Okay. Let's create. Now what you will do is, you know that the first element of the matrix, 1 comma 1 is this, 1. Okay. Now they are saying is that, AI plus 1 comma J is equal to AI comma J plus C. And AI J plus 1 is equal to plus D. Basically, when we will go down, we will add D in the element and we will go right, we will add C. So, it will be 1 plus 2, 3, then again plus 2, 5, then again plus 2, 7. And if you will go down, so for every element, uh, okay, I think I am. Yeah, sorry. So, when we are going uh, on the right, we have to add D. D means we will add 3. So, it will be 4, then it will be 7, then it will be 10, like this. And when we go down, we will add C. So, it will be plus 2. All the elements, right? Then again, plus two and plus two, right? 
this is what will happen in a whole matrix and this is how the matrix will be created right so for every given value of a c d and n we can create a matrix now what they are asking you is they are basically asking you that you are given with a mat with numbers of some matrix so basically if you will see each matrix will contain n square numbers or we can say n into n numbers right so you are actually given with an array of n into n numbers you can see here and you have to determine that for the given value of c and d so you are basically given with three things you are given with a value of n a value of c a value of d these three things are given to you and you are given with n square numbers these n square numbers okay now you have to find that whether these n square numbers are valid or not on the basis of this n c and d so obviously if n is n square number hai, means numbers are valid but can we obtain that numbers by having the value of c and d which is given to us so first of all we need to find what's the start value of a matrix and you will see guys that the start value of the matrix will always be the minimum value of the whole matrix so what we will do first of all we will find the start value which is let's say a to find the start value we will find the minimum of the whole array which is given for example here the minimum is 1 the minimum is 1 right now our a is 1 now when we got the first number we will first of all get the first row of this particular matrix right and we can store it somewhere let's say in a queue i will store the first row so of the first row will be 1 then we will add d to it so d and c is given to us for example in this case in this case d is 3 and c is 2 so we will add 3 it will become 4 Again, add three, it will become seven. Add three, it will become ten. Let's say n is equal to four. So we have got first row, which is one, four, seven, ten. Now, what about the next row? Guys, next row will be simply add t to all the elements of the first row, and you will get the second row. For example, there are four elements in the first row. Simply add two to all the elements. Now, this is the second row. Again, add two. This is the third row. This is how you can also get n rows. So once you get all, like once you get the first row having n columns, and then using that first row, you can find all the n rows. So overall, you will get all the n into n numbers. Right now, the numbers that you have created using this logic, and the numbers that they have given, if that both the numbers are equal, that means that that particular n square numbers are valid. So you will basically solve both the vectors and see whether they are equal or not. right that's the basic thing that i have also done so if you will see my uh, my logic here what i have actually done is uh yeah so i have first taken n c and d then i have taken n but of the array a that is given to us and i will create array b from my side so array a is given to us and array b i will create on the basis of this c d okay so once i have taken input of array a which contains n into n vectors uh, n into n numbers i will first find the minimum of that array because the minimum number of that array should be the 1 comma 1 index number right now as i told you we will first create a queue that will contain that will contain the first the elements of the first row so the elements of the first row will start from 1 which is the minimum number and we will add a d into okay so if you will see we are first adding mn the minimum number to it and then n minus 1 times i am adding d to it and then adding that number in the q and also in the b array because whatever elements we are having here we will add that in the b array also so now what contains so this q contains the element of the first row and the same elements are also there in the b so whatever elements we insert in q the same we will also insert in insert in b because q will keep refreshing पहले ये है फिर टू ऐड कर देंगे तो ये हो जाएगा फिर ये हो जाएगा सेम क्यू विल अपडेट राइट नाउ वंस वी हैव द फर्स्ट रो फॉर रिमेनिंग एंड माइनस वन रो आई विल रन अ लूप सो फॉर एवरी एलिमेंट ऑफ एवरी एलिमेंट ऑफ अ क्यू आई विल पॉप दैट एलिमेंट एंड आई विल ऐड सी टू इट एंड आई विल अगेन पुश इन द क्यू सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल फर्स्ट आई विल रिमूव वन एंड एड थ्री रिमूव फोर एड सिक्स रिमूव सेवन एड नाइन रिमूव टेन एड ट्वेल्व दिस विल हैपन हाउ मेनी n minus one time so that we can have all the n rows and once we have all the n rows means our b array also contains n square numbers 
to sort both B and A array. And finally, if both A and B are equal, that means it's yes, else it's no. Right. This is again a very basic brute force solution. Okay. That we have actually done. Okay. Cool. Amazing. Uh, now let's discuss the uh, problem number C. Okay. Before that, uh, uh, before moving problem number D, if you guys have any doubts, you can ask that to me in the comment section. Also, if you have, uh, you can also join our telegram channel, right? So let's discuss the problem number C, which is inhabitant of a deep sea. Also guys, for those who don't know, we have launched our website, which is coding75.com. Uh, here in this website, guys, you can access content regarding CP, DSA, interpretation, a lot of things, right? You can also get all the editorials, uh, solutions of our, our problems, right? This is basically the code forces editorials. You can get all of that here. I regularly upload these editorials here. You can access the problem. You can view it. You can solve the problem here. And also you can view the editorial here. Okay. So you can check out this portal, which is codingcentral.com. You can also check out the pro subscription for us, which we are starting in next some weeks. We are going to uh, we are going to launch this pro where we will organize live DSA classes, one to one mock interviews, and all of that. You can explore that and please participate in the survey if you are interested. Amazing. So let's move towards the problem number C now. Uh, so this was also a good problem, guys. This problem says that uh, basically there are some SIPs okay that are numbered from numbered from one to n. Now, what the thing is that uh, there is a, a Kraken that will actually uh, attack on the SIP and by attacking what it will do, it will reduce the durability of the SIP. And the way he will attack is he will first attack the first SIP, then the last SIP, then the first SIP, then the last SIP. Until uh, the durability of a SIP uh, becomes zero, it remains. After becoming zero, it, it stinks, right? That is what happens. So. What we will actually do here is So for example, our SIPs are like this Four, three. Okay, for example, this is the, this, these are the number of SIPs I will number it And let's say our value of uh, K is 10 means it will make 10, 10 attacks on this particular array. So the first attack here, it will make it one. Then second attack here, it will make it. Now again I attack, it will make it zero. Now here it will make it one. When it will become zero, it will be gone. Okay, and you can see currently four attacks are done. Okay, now again it will make attack. Two attacks more are done. This also will be gone. Again make attack. Again make attack. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2. So you can see now all the 10 attacks are done. And finally, if you will see how many SIPs are stringed. First and second pivot. I did, I think. So I can mention the number of attacks also. So I made one attack and it became one. Now second attack. Now third attack. Now fourth attack. Now fifth attack. Because this is gone, right? Fifth attack. Now sixth attack. Now seventh attack. Now eighth attack. Ninth attack. Finally the tenth attack. So after ten attacks, you can you can see that one. Two and three sinks, three sips are stringed. They are drawn, right? And these are left. So that is what you have to tell me how many sips are basically. Uh, if you see what they're asking is they're asking how many uh, sips are sunk. Okay. Means unki durability bilkul zero ho So how you will find that basically? See, first of all, you have to understand one thing that if you are making K attacks that k attacks are distributed equally on the on the sips from the start and on the sip from the end so if you have k attacks k by 2 attacks are done are handled by the sips from the start and k by 2 from the end and if let's say k is odd let's say if this k is 11 in that case this will take one extra why because uh, obviously 
we have odd number of uh, attacks and we are starting from the first so first to have we'll have one extra attack right so we can do in we can write in this way we can write k plus one by two attacks so we can say k plus one by two attacks are handled by from the start and k by two attacks are handled from the back now see guys how we will know that how many ships are you know drawn after k plus one by two attacks from the start and from the back for that what we will do is uh, first of all i will write it in a better way so yeah as i told you k plus one by two attacks from the front and k by two attacks from the back. now see i will first of all write a prefix array for here okay what is prefix array prefix array will be the prefix sum array basically i will create so it will be two then sum till here three then eight plus three eleven then eleven plus two thirteen then nineteen then twenty three and twenty six right similarly i will get a suffix set suffix array we take from the last the suffix sum array so till here sum is three then seven then seven plus six thirteen uh then thirteen plus two fifteen fifteen plus eight twenty plus one twenty four plus two uh sorry twenty four plus two twenty six right this is the, how we are actually you know, this is how we are actually uh finding the prefix sum and suffix sum why we are doing that now see guys if our k is uh, let's say 13 right so if our k is 13 that means e seven attacks a plus one by two means seven attacks will be done from the front and how many six attacks will be done from the back okay so now for this both the prefix and suffix array we will find the upper bound of seven and six for the prefix array we will find the upper bound of seven basically we will find that till where this attacks have have affected so if you will see the upper bound of seven is this eleven this is the upper bound, upper bound or we can maybe say lower bound not upper bound so we can say lower bound so this is the lower bound one basically yahan tak affect karega attack attack will affect till here right it will not go more than that in fact what i'm saying when we will, when we will be six we will take seven attacks it will affect till here that means ki iske pehle ki sari to thing ho hi jayengi this means all the all the ships before this point will definitely be synced they will definitely sync and for this point it depends so if the value is greater than 11 or equal to 11 means this will also sync otherwise this will not sync that is what that will what will happen right and same from the back so it is 6 we will find the lower amount of 6 which is this we will say it as lb2 that means किसके पहले ये तो sync होगा ही होगा this is doubt basically if the lower bound is equal to this it's fine if it is greater lower bound is greater that means वो पूरी तरह sync नहीं होगी it will decrease the durability but it will not be completely sync you can see also when we will make seven attacks this will be sync this will be sync now remaining four attacks this will be decreased to four but it will not be completely sync हाँ अगर यहाँ पे eleven होता if this is eleven then this will also be completely sync right so that that is the first thing that we will do right so if you will see the code what i am doing here is what i am doing here is Sorry. So, so 
Huh, if you will see, I have first of all taken an input. Now I have two different arrays pre prefix sum and suffix sum. Just like I discussed here pre and the suffix. Okay. Suffix will take from the start and suffix on the back. I hope that you guys know how to do this. Now to find the lower bound for the suffix, now I am first reversing it because lower bound there should be an increasing order solid array, but it is in decreasing order. So I will first reverse it and I will again make it in the same way. You can see, I have reversed it. Then I reverse it back. So to just find the lower bound, I reversed it. Right. Great. So first I find the lower bound for the value k plus 1 by 2 because on the front, k plus 1 attacks are done. And for the back, for the suffix, we are just checking for k by 2. Right. And finally, because this lb2 will give you the index based on a reverse order, but if we have again reversed it in a decreasing order, I will get that lb2 from the back. Okay, starting se wo i the next pair, back se wo n minus i minus 1 po jayega, right? That's the thing. Now see guys, if this lb1 is greater than lb2, let's see how. See, for example, if k is 130, so if k is 1, or let's say not 130, but let's say if k is, uh, for example, 50. So if k is 50, there will be 25 attacks on the front and 25 attacks on the back. That means this lb1, lb1 will come at here. Means from the starting itself, Kraken can destroy all these ships. And from the back also, he can destroy all these ships. Means ultimately, you can see he can destroy the overall all the ships. Puri ships will destroy kar sakta hai because lb1 is less than uh, greater than lb2. Are you getting? Starting se bhi it can destroy all the ships, right? That is why whenever this LB1 is greater than LB2, means it is it has crossed. Initially, LB1 is smaller, you can see. LB1 should always be smaller and LB2 should be greater. Because LB1 is from the forward, kidney ships are destroying. LB2 is from the backward. But if they are crossing each other, that means all the ships are being destroyed. Now, if they have not crossed, if they had not crossed, now where to do? Now we have to check two things. First thing is guys, let's say, for example, agar from the start, let's say if from the start there are 11 attacks. So for 11, this will be the lower bound. And because this 11 is equal to the lower bound, it is equal to the lower bound. That means it can destroy all these three ships. But if this is less than a lower bound, let's say it's just 8. That means it can destroy only two ships. One less than that. So what I'm doing is if the lower bound value means if the value at the lower bound is greater means the attacks are less than that value that means we can only destroy the strips that are before it we are just adding lb1 means that index for example ye lower bound 2 hai matlab sirf do strips destroy ho sakti but if it is equal that means we can destroy three strips all these three strips can be destroyed so it is lb plus 1 means 2 plus 1 3. right and the same thing we are doing for suffix if suffix is greater add minus one else at so because this lb is from the backward so i'm separating n from and the final case is when lb1 and lb2 are equal that means let's say let me give you an example for example uh it is 26 uh, or let's say it is 20 uh, 26 bhi hoga na to lb1 yahan par aayega lb2 will come here but in some cases they will come at the same point so in this case thing is that they from the start also they have reached the ship from the back also they have reached to the same ship the question is whether they have destroyed that ship completely or not so for that simply first we have to just check for a one ship what we will do is we will check that total okay, total what's the value of k and we will also find that total of the all the durability of the ship see if total means the sum of durability of all the ships if sum of durability of all the ships is greater than k that means one ship will be remaining the middle ship where both l1 l lb1 and lb2 are that will not be destroyed because uski durability total durability k se zyada hai theek hai agar nahi zyada nahi hai equal bhi hai to destroy ho jayegi right so guys, this is how I solve this particular problem. I know that it's a little bit, you know, not a little bit, but it's a really complex approach. Maybe that I have solved, right? But yeah, this is how we have solved this particular uh, approach. So I hope that you have got the clarity. If you have still any doubt, 
you can uh, ask that to me in the comment section or you can uh, maybe uh, join telegram to ask your doubts there right amazing now let's move forward to the next thing uh already a very long video next is this inaccurate uh, subsequence search so this is actually a uh, problem where we are having a array a and array b what we want to do is we want to find that we are going to find some sub arrays of array a which are of size m so array a is of n integers array b is of m integers we want to find sub array in array a of size m such that such that uh, the thing is that there should be at least k elements in array a that should match with the elements of array b so what i will basically do is we will basically check for every sub array in the array a every sub array of size m in the array we will see whether in that sub array of size m number of elements which are matching with b are at least k or not if they are k or more than k increase the count if they are not k don't increase it so basically you have to find all number of sub arrays such that this is possible right so guys for that what i've done now if you will directly see the code what i've done i have used map if you will see also i have made one wrong answer this was a very silly silly mistake i was doing that is why you can see after just two minutes i made the accepted solution i was doing a very silly mistake actually let's discuss what i was doing uh so basically guys i have first of all created three maps right so three maps are basically map m1 map m2 map m3 so map what map m2 contains map m2 basically contains the uh, frequency of elements which are not in sub array or the current sub array of a so what we will do, we will we'll follow a sliding window approach. So one by one, we will take every sub array of size m of a and this m2 will, will basically tell the frequency of element which are not in the sub array a. Are you getting which are not there in a. Now what is m1? m1 are the frequency of elements which are matched with a. Basically, which are matched with element of B. So basically, एक ऐसा element जो A में भी और B में भी है, means वो sub array में भी और B में भी है. So we we will get a element which is in that sub array also and in B also. Means we got a match. We will add it in M1. And M3 will contain unused element. Unused element means element which is currently in A but it is not in B. Right. That is what we will see. तो कैसे करेंगे हम लोग इस प्रॉब्लम को वी विल गेट दिस एम वन एम टू एम थ्री इनिशियली फॉर ऑल द कैरेक्टर्स ऑफ एर ए बी आई विल एड इट्स फ्रीक्वेंसी इन एम टू इनिशियली बिकॉज ऑल टेक इन एम टू राइट नाउ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल विल टेक द फर्स्ट यू नो द फर्स्ट सब एरे ऑफ साइज एम स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम जीरो टू एम माइनस वन आई विल आई ट्रेड दिस करेंट विल स्टोर द नंबर ऑफ एलिमेंट्स विच विच आर करेंटली मैचिंग मतलब इन द सब एरे एंड बी हाउ मेन एलिमेंट्स आर मैचिंग Now see guys, for the first element of array A, starting from zero to m minus one, the first element in array A, which is also present in array B, what is M two? M two will tell you the elements of array B which are present there, which are not matched currently, right? These elements of M two are not currently matched. So if the element that is in array A, the if the same element is present in array B also, and it is not matched, that means we got a match. तो वेन एवर विल गेट अ मैच कि ओके इसका एलिमेंट उससे मैच हो रहा है वी विल इंक्रीज द करेंट क्योंकि वी गॉट अ मैच विल इंक्रीज द करेंट एंड वी विल आल्सो डिक्रीज दैट एलिमेंट इन एम टू वाई बिकॉज अब तो मैच हो गया ना वी गॉट इट मैच डिक्रीज इट नो इट्स नॉट प्रेजेंट एंड इंक्रीज इन एम वन बिकॉज एम वन में देर विल बी एलिमेंट विच आर मैच एंड इफ दैट एलिमेंट ए आई इज नॉट प्रेजेंट इन पी और इफ इट इज नो यू नो पॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ मैचिंग Then add it in M3 means it's a unused element. Why we are using unused also? We are storing it so that when we will remove the element from the sub array, we will first try to remove the unused element. Now, for the first sub array of size m, if the current elements which are masked, see the current elements which are masked 
आर ग्रेटर एन इक्वल टू के इंक्रीज द आंसर सिंपल राइट नो वॉट यू विल डू नो फॉर द रिमेनिंग एलिमेंट तो फर्स्ट फॉर एग्जाम्पल दिस इज द एरे इट्स ए टू वन एट सिक्स वट एवर इज द एरे फर्स्ट विल टेक लेट्स ए एम इज फोर फर्स्ट यू विल टेक दिस फर्स्ट वी हैव टेकन दिस पर्टिकुलर सब एरे नाउ यू विल टेक द नेक्स्ट एलिमेंट लेट से दिस आई एलिमेंट so when you will take this i element you will also remove this i minus one element so one will be removed and one new element will be added okay that will be that will is what will happen okay <clears throat> so if you will see here what will happen first of all this is the element x that we have to add so to add a element the logic will be same just like we are using here same logic that if that element is pres is present in m2 means it can be matched Simply match it, increase the current, decrease it in M two means because it is matched, and increase it in M one. Else, if there's, it's not possible to match it. Make M three increase means it's unused. So this is how to how we add a new element X in our map or in our window. But to we have to also remove the element at i minus one M na. This is the element that we have to remove. Now when we are removing an element, obviously we will try. To not have a match. For example, कि अगर हमारा b let's say है, uh, let's say b was two one two two, okay, eight one two two. Let's say elements here were, uh, wait, element for, uh, uh, sorry, one two. Let's say it is three. अब देखो कि इनमें से अगर आप देखो तो एक टू मैच हो रहा होगा यहाँ पर एक वन और एक एट टू वन एट वॉज मैचिंग वन वन वॉज मैचिंग एंड वन टू वॉज मैचिंग राइट वन टू वॉज मैच एंड वन टू वॉज फ्री बेसिकली इन द एम थ्री ये तीन होंगे एम वन में एंड दिस मज बी इन द एम थ्री तो वेन विल रिमूव अ टू यू विल नॉट विल नॉट सो टू रिमूव दिस टू इसको क्यों रिमूव करें क्योंकि ये मैच था ऑलरेडी So just assume okay, we are not removing three, or maybe we are removing this two, and now we are making this two mapped. So two is already masked. Ye two chala gaya, but already ek two present hai na. So first of all, we'll try to remove those number which are unmasked, which are useless. This is M three. If we have to remove a number y, and if that y is present in this M three map, means the numbers which are use which are useless. First reduce that. Else, if the number is not present, let's say we have eight remove करना पड़ेगा तो eight तो यहीं से remove करेंगे ना और दूसरा कोई eight है ही नहीं जो map कर ले there's no other eight that case we have to reduce the number of mass element I will decrease m one and I will increase m two means now we have one eight which is unmatched right and again if current is greater than equal to k increase down right so this is the logic guys how we have uh, solved this particular problem. it was again a very uh, you know uh, complex problem so if you have any doubt you can come you can ask that to me in the comment section or you can also join our telegram to ask you now let's discuss the last problem for this particular video which is long inversions this was uh, this is actually a very great problem right so in this problem basically you are given a number a string s right which is actually you know a binary string You can ex. You have to choose a uh, in integer k, k. And now what you have to do is you have to uh, uh, make the all the uh, uh, oh, bits of that binary string to one. And how you can do it? You can choose the integer k, and for and you can you can choose a sub string of size k, and you can flip the sub string, right? You can flip the sub string. That is what you have to do. Right, that so that's the basic thing. Now the thing comes is what's the maximum value of k that you can get? That is what you have to find. So guys, if you will see when we will swap, so we want all the uh, all the string as one 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 one. So we will swap when there is a zero present. So we will swap that zero to one. We will present only that way, right? So see guys, what how I have implemented this is. Uh, You will see here. You will first of all so see the maximum value of k that we can get is n, and the minimum value we can get is one. The maximum value of k we can get is n, and minimum we can get is one. 
वन से कम तो नहीं हो सकता राइट तो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल फॉर ईच वैल्यू ऑफ के विल रन अ लूप स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम एन टू वन राइट इनिशियली माई करंट विल बी जीरो वॉट इज दिस करंट तो करंट जीरो मीन्स करंट जीरो मीन्स कि इनिशियली वी आर सर्चिंग फॉर द नंबर जीरो कि जहां भी जीरो आएगा वहां से स्टार्ट करके हमें स्वैप करना है तो इनिशियली वी आर सर्चिंग फॉर जीरो दैट वेन एवर जीरो कम्स स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम देयर टिल द लास्ट विल स्वैप राइट बट ये वो जीरो नहीं एक्चुअली में ये जीरो कुछ और है ये जीरो वो है गाइस फॉर एग्जाम्पल द थिंग इज दैट फॉर एग्जाम्पल द एरे इज लाइक दिस लेट्स लेट्स से आर के इज फोर तो वेन आई विल मेक अ स्वैप हेयर दिस जीरो विल बिकम वन दिस विल बिकम वन दिस विल बिकम जीरो दिस विल बिकम वन तो हाउ वी विल नो दैट वॉट आर नेक्स्ट नंबर अ स्वैप इज हैपन दैट विल बी डिफर डिफाइन बाय दिस जीरो दिस करेंट अगर करंट जीरो दैट मीन्स दैट इज नो स्वैप हैपन इफ करंट इज वन दैट मीन्स अ स्वैप एज हैपन राइट सो वॉट आई वी विल डू हेयर इज कैन वन मीन्स दैट वेदर इट इज पॉसिबल टू टू हैव द आंसर विद द वैल्यू आई तो कैन वन है इसका मतलब कि हमारा आंसर है एंड दिस इज रिमूव तो एक्चुअली रिमूव क्या है रिमूव इज एक्चुअली दोज इंडेक्सेज हाउ वी कैन से दीज आर बेसिकली दोज इंडेक्सेज वेयर द फ्लिप इज हैपनिंग यहाँ पे फ्लिप हुआ है राइट नो वट आई विल डू फॉर ईच वैल्यू ऑफ आई आई विल स्टार्ट फ्रॉम जीरो एंड विल गो टू एन आई विल फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल सी द करेंट नंबर एक्स वेयर वी आर हम लोग एक्स पे हैं राइट नो इफ एट दिस इंडेक्स जे इफ एनी स्वैप हैज हैपन बिफोर तो इनवर्स द वैल्यू ऑफ रिवर्स करेंट जीरो का वन वन का जीरो इफ इट इज जीरो मेक इट वन इफ इट इज वन मेक इट जीरो राइट अब देखो हमने एक्स में क्या किया हमने क्या एक्स जोर करेंट Why? Because current अगर zero है तो जोर विल हैव नो इफेक्ट बट इफ करेंट इज वन जोर विल ऑल्सो इनवर्स इट एंड दैट्स द थिंग वो फ्लिप करेगा ना उसको इनिशियली जीरो है बट अगर कुछ रिवर्स हो चुका है यहाँ पे रिवर्स हुआ तो आगे वालों के लिए भी वो सारे रिवर्स आएंगे राइट अब अगर एक्स ऑब्वियसली मैंने क्या बोला था अगर एक्स जीरो है तो ही हम रिवर्स करेंगे कितने नंबर्स के लिए अगले के नंबर्स के लिए और के यहाँ पे हमारे लिए आई है तो आई इज द वैल्यू ऑफ के दैट वी आर ट्रेवर्सिंग So for the next k number starting from j, how many numbers will be there? J plus i minus one. एक तो ये होगा कि if this is going out of the index, that means answer is not possible. Simply make can equal to zero. But if it is possible, means if we can starting from j for the next i numbers, if we can reverse it, simply first of all insert j plus i in the remove because j से लेके j plus i minus one starting from j. Till j plus i minus one, we have to make that swap from zero to one, zero to one. This current. After that, I want again same. You can see, यहाँ से यहाँ तक ये swap होगा ना? ये सब same रहेगा. That is why I'm in this. In I am inserting this index. उसके बाद फिर से आप same को flip कर दो. Right? And then make the current here. If finally can is true, make answer is equal. This was actually a very you know a complex problem. This one. and uh, this actually needs a good understanding you know of how we implemented that bitwise and all of that if you if you have a better implementation of this problem please do feel free to share it in the comment section or in the telegram and also you can ask cool doubt in the comment in telegram right so guys this is how we discussed all the problem of this particular contest uh, you can also explore this coding75.com site right that we have uh, produced and you can in case of any feedback please feel free to the feedback from right So thank you for watching this particular video see you in the next video thank you